Why? Because it was introduced to human beings by a god called Jehuti. It has the power of a god. It was written along the Nile in ancient Kemet. Any writing taught to human beings by God were done in Africa. Modern people can talk of inventing writing, but the beak of this God alone reveals the writing instruments used in the form of a fountain pen. The name of the writing speaks for itself. It means the word of God or divine speech. No wonder the Greeks, upon conquering Kemet and renaming it Egypt, saw its power and renamed it Holy Carvings, or as you know it today, hieroglyphics. Let's watch the next slide. And this is the alphabet of the Medoneta or the Umduneta. You can get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, you know, the way it is arranged. But I will get to the more formalized one whereby I've actually broken it down for you to understand. Let's watch the next slide. Now, this is the Medoneta or the Imduneta. You can see the vulture is the capital A, and the leg is B, a cloth, a C, a hand is D. It goes on, same vulture, it stands for E. The viper stands for F. You can see G, and the rope right around itself is an H. You can see the blade here stands for an I. A snake stands for J. This is like a calabash cut into two. And that stands for a K, and a lion stands for an L. An owl stands for an M. And these gyrations looks like water stands for N, a quail chick stands for O, and this square stands for P. This character stands for Q, the mouth stands for R, the folded cloth again stands for S, and this cake stands for T. This quail chick again can stand for both U and W, and you have X, Y, Z. And you have two Y's. This, this one is a smaller, uh, lowercase Y. And the two blades stands for an uppercase Y. And this is how my name is spelled. And you know this, sir. A, Y, I, N, I, B, I, S, A, H. You can see it. So anybody interested in learning the Medoneta has to master the alphabet. Can somebody look at this and say that Africa did not contribute to history, did not contribute to civilization? Hegel has just said that. But the bottom line is for us to fight back with documentation to prove him wrong. It helps our young, it's helped the youth to grow up proud of themselves, knowing very well that their ancestors contributed to civilization, that their ancestors left behind documents to prove that they were part of history. In fact, that they created history. But if we don't fight back, what happens? they would never know. This is the main objective of this presentation, is to prove Hegel wrong. Now these are the Mduneta, or the Medoneta, 
they numerous of the chemetic writing. So you get, get, get one all the way to 10, and the, the 10 looks like an N or half of an oval. This is 20, and this is 30. Those are the chemetic numerals. We can go all the way to 100, we can go to 1,000, we can go to a million, but that requires everybody watching the show to try to find out how they can learn this emduneta or the metaneta or the word of God or the divine speech that I'm trying to address. Now, this is ancient chemetic script. Look at that. You cannot look at this and say that, that these people were not advanced. But Hegel says, we did not contribute to civilization. And if we don't have this to prove it, there is nothing that can be done to correct it. In other words, the nonsense or the stupidity that has been laid down by Hegel will become the truth. Elevating the lie to become the truth. That is exactly what happens if you leave a lie to linger for too long. We are not going to allow that to happen. Divine speech in African traditionalism especially would not allow that to happen. That's why I'm making this presentation. This is a Sudanic Mariotic script. It came to a point, this is the same thing like the, the, the Imduneta or the Meduneta. But it came to a point that in ancient uh, Kemet, the name of Kemet changed to Meru. So if you look at the Meruotic script, they're talking about that particular time that Egypt or Kemet was called Meru. But this is the same script, the same Mduneta. So that's why when they talk about civilization along the Nile, they're talking about civilization from Uganda. That time, Uganda was called Ganda. Passing through Sudan, Sudan was called Nubia. Ethiopia, Ethiopia at that time was called Kush, and then Kemet. You were talking about civilization along the Nile on all this piece of land. And they wrote this. But it came to a point sometimes, you know, like words change on a daily basis, not on a daily basis, on a yearly basis, especially with this uh, invention of the internet, there are new words coming on a, a daily basis. You got to be up to date. Writing was also changing or evolving along the Nile. That's why it came to a point whereby we had the Sudanic Meriotic script. But it's nothing different from the Meruneta. Almost the same thing. Here you have the Indebe Igbo writing script of Nigeria. You also have the Insibidi script of Nigeria. We have the Afan Oromo script of Ethiopia and Kenya. The Benin Ido script. Now, just imagine. If you look at uh, the colors, the colors are a key to everything. The red colors have different meanings. The yellow colors have different meanings. The green colors, different meaning. Purple colors, different meaning. That was in Benin. So we have the Bene Ido script. Hegel didn't know this. 
We have the Schumann script of the Cameroon. The Schumann script of the Cameroon. Now, I want to give you the history of the Schumann script. The Schumann people of Cameroon invented and sustained a self-governing writing system and a bronze cast printing set device to document the histories of the people. Sultan Ibrahim Njoya, whose father was killed resisting the German invaders, led the invention. From 1895 through 1903, the invention was completed. The writing system went through seven stages of development. The first stage had over 500, 500 pictographs, and the last stage had 35 silographs. Graphs designed to represent the phonetic and tone sounds in the Bamum language of the Sumon people. King Njoyo, Njoya opened a school in Fumbam where many were trained to become literate. Listen, listen, listen to the word literate and promote learning in their own language. Then came the French and the end of enlightenment. So now, Hegel does not know that in 1895, and this Hegel was writing this in the 1950s, 1956. And he did not know, this is a person calling himself a historian. He did not know that in 1895 through 1903, the Schumann script was in existence in the Cameroon. And he did not know that it was the French, after colonizing Cameroon, or after colonizing the Schumann people, that brought about the end of their writing. Their writing right now is in museums in France, Paris, France, and London, England. So Hegel cannot, in his right mind, say that the people of Cameroon did not contribute to world history. They were deprived of their contribution, but they did. Let's watch the next slide. This is a slide that I want to test my viewers. I want anybody watching this show to call 347-275-4910 with an answer. Name this writing script, or what is the name of this writing script? Call 347-275-4910. 4910 with your answer. Now, these are uh, the Akan Adinkra symbols of Ghana. Very well known. You have strength, adaptability, energy, freedom and emancipation, supremacy of God, harmony, intelligence, power of love, peace, Transformation, unity in diversity, and universe. What else do Hegel or does Hegel want from Africa by saying that we did not contribute to civilization? This is another writing script that Africans would just pick a wall and start writing on it. Look, if people are not well prepared to preserve their history, they can't do this thing. 